if you were to, to take it from sort of the origins of hip hop, what would you say were the major hip hop battles throughout, you know, from, from the beginning to now? All right, the first one that everybody, the most notable one would have to be Kumo D and Busy B. And which I would say it was not a fair battle because everybody knew Busy B was a more party rocking, rock the crowd and Kumo D was a lyricist, but Busy B was talking about he was win, gonna win that money, like he was gonna take it home. So shit, I'm here, but you don't see me nigga, right here? Okay, so let's get it popping. So that battle at Harlem World was definitely that, you have to put that there. Were you there? Huh? No. Uh -uh. no. And it was, it, I, I, I wanted to go that night. I don't know what happened. And I was so <laughs> upset. Because you know how it was, right? That was right there on 116th right, Street. That, that, that's and then that's true, right? that, was, that was definitely a spot I used to be in all that all the time. And now, you know, a lot of people lie. No, I was not there that night. Angry I wasn't, but <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't there that night. Okay. You know, and um, that was definitely. I would say that one, um, Cold Crush versus Romantic Fantastic. That's an old head, you know, old heads would know, but if we going from then to now, you gotta uh, include those. Uh, definitely uh, LL and Cool Mo D. Mm -hmm. But they got it popping for a minute. They, they was, it was, it was getting it popping. KRS and Chan. Yeah, you can't leave that out. BDP, Queens, it was going at Vietnam. Um, Antoinette and Light. You know, you can't, you know, we gotta put the ladies in. No, no, no. What's the name, too? But I don't, it, it didn't really go too hard, but uh, the Shantae's, they, yeah. the Roxanne's, Roxanne's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know. But these was battles that, uh, was was notable, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then once it, it started coming into play, you know it was a good battle, a lot of people kind of downplayed, but they was going at it. Nori and Tragedy Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. Do you do you remember that? Yeah, do do you remember that joint right there? Like they was, they was busting at each other hard. Cube and Common, cause remember Cube was with NWA, and Common Sense, remember, Cop, that comes from Chicago. Right. And even though he wasn't the, uh, like, right, he's a calm, relaxed dude, but he was a common sense, you know, he had on the goose and he was kind of thugging it, like, you understand what I'm saying? And, right. you know, he, he made the bitch in you, you understand right. what I'm saying, that cube, so that kind of had that. he performed it in L.A. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and that kind of had that, and then what cube had, what cube had, no Vaseline, but that was more towards. Uh, that, was, that was definitely. No, towards, him and, yeah. with him and. Hold up, Cuban Easy E might have had the, the first street element. Wow, kind of, yeah. And then then we can't forget about the homie Tim Dog, with the fuck Compton. Remember uh, mm -hmm. when they was going, you know, a little. So, nah, it's been a couple of them. It's been a couple of them, yo. Okay, so, uh, cause, uh, you know, because as we're going through, I realize this is just too many. It's like, too many, know, yeah, it's, that's what I'm saying. Too like. Many. Like we we skipping at it from A to Z. If you were to name your top three battles of all time, mm. three, two, one, what would be number three? Hmm. Number three slot, I would have to give to uh, KRS One and uh, MC Shan. Why? Why is that? Uh, that was like, I think they went about a good five records deep. You know. And KRS One was one of the greatest lyricists ever. Yeah. Juice Crew was strong. Yeah. You understand? And you know, it was kinda like uh, a monumental thing and a respectable one at that. Because it's like, you know, they at the end of the day it was like no bad blood after it, you know. Marley Marl and Red Alert, it's cool up to today. You understand what I'm saying? Like everybody kind of, you know. So I, I'm, I'm gonna go with that you one. Karis won, and, and I think Marley Marl did an album together or something. Yeah, exactly. And see, but and that's what I'm talking about. When it's all said and done, everybody's able to break bread and still be, you know. I, I remember seeing a, I think it was like one of the beef series where Fifty said that 
the bridge was over. The, the bridge is over was so hot that they were playing it in Queens, even though he was dissing Queens mm. in the record. <laughs> Yo, that record, when, that, when the bridge is over came out, it, it was just like crazy. You know what I'm saying? South Bronx was nasty. But when the bridge was over came out, it was just like game over. Like there's no more to talk about. Let's leave this alone. Cause I remember uh um Sam came Sam came back with uh that I think the second one Sam did was that beat you down, 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 that beat you down, like and it was really like the third verse where he was going hard though. It wasn't a whole like this record, you know what I'm saying? So you know, but when uh, uh, the bridge is over, King, that was pretty much like, yo, come on, man. <laughs> Especially when he started, when KRS One started that, yiddy, yaddy, yiddy, yaddy, when he started doing that shit, yiddy, it was yaddy, like, yaddy, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah it, it just was like, he started going into the reggae flow. But um, yeah, I'll definitely give. Uh, That's number three. That'll be number three. Number two. Man. Number two. Damn, number two. Mm. Number two, it, it's kind of hard, man. The second biggest one. I would, I would like to say, um, LL Cannabis, because okay. it was, it was a lot of hype behind it. A lot of people got dragged into it. You had Mike Tyson. Um, you had Wyclef, you know, why the Wyclef came and what Clef got to do with it. Like, you know, it was... Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell. Like, a lot of <laughs> a lot of big heads got pulled into that. You know what I'm saying? And the hype around the hype around that joint, uh, the serious show. Um, what was interesting about that joint also is that even though LL was, was definitely the legendary status, he wasn't popping at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, he was... It was it was sort of a very low time for 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 LL. Like people kind of didn't think he could do that anymore. I ain't gonna lie. I, I said, damn man, I hope LL don't let this nigga handle his ass, yo. <laughs> because at, with, with cannabis, remember, yeah, see, you from the era I'm from with the mixtape game. Cannabis was so hot on the mixtape level, and with the rapping and spitting, he was somebody nobody was fucking with. Right. So when that whole four three two one situation happened, I was like, "Oh, why the LL fuck would do like you know like, cause you know respectfully, L is one of my favorite artists. Like you know he's longevity, cool dude. You know he knows the history of the game and everything. You know, but um, he came back with that Jack the Ripper shit like that. I think that that was the one with the horns in it. Wasn't it Jack the Ripper? That was yo like. LL said so much shit that joint. I, I, I got brain lock on that. He went in though. He went in. That that joint right there was like at least five and a half minutes. So I would have to put cannabis and LL at number two. Do you, do you think that 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 cannabis, you know, never recovered from that battle? I don't think it's that he didn't recover. I think when he put the album out and it didn't live up to his expectations, mm -hmm. that's what, you know, because the fact that he stood up with L was, was you know, in the first the first record, that, that, uh, that knockout shit was crazy. That record was crazy right there. The beat was crazy, he laid it down right, so. Nah, I think when he didn't deliver the album, that's when people were like, oh man, like. Mm -hmm. I feel you. Number one. Number one would definitely be a Jay Z and a Nas. Why, why is that? Those are two of the biggest artists. Like you know, in, in New York, and at the the era, at the time, it was always that who's the king of New York. You understand? Who's the biggest artist in New York? It's always that king of New York talk. You understand? And, Big past and always kind of been like Jay Z and Nas names lingering. You understand? So I think Jay felt that the only way he was gonna be king was to knock Nas on his ass. And when he took them shots at Nas, I said, "Damn, this shit about to be on." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it was a good battle too. It what was, was the standout lines in that battle? 
Oh man. I think when when Jay with me, when Jay Z, see that like I said, the takeover song is kind of tricky. But when he used that fucking shit from Sly and the Family Stone, that user lame that shit. That shit was nasty. No wait wait. That, that, that was uh was it David Bowie? Fame. Huh? That was fuck fame. But but what's the name? Sly Sly Stone Sly Stone. Nah, that was Sly Stone. You might, have to, you might have to look that up, man. I know Sly Stone had used that too. You have to you look mm. that up. Maybe we not. gonna we gonna <laughs> we gonna go off the camera on that. But long okay. story, when he used that, that was nasty. You know what I'm saying? But then he was talking about the uh me start talking about it. and it confused me because he was saying he's now nah, I saw his first tech on when he was on tour with, with me with Law Professor. And I know no Nah said that to him. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, like I didn't know Jay was you, you understand? It was like different shit was coming out in that battle with things I ain't know about. No, but uh when that Nas nigga said is he Dave Diddy or Dave Daddy or Dave Dummy? Oh, I get it. He's Biggie. And you're Biggie and he's Puffy. That shit, whatever. And I said, oh, man, this nigga is like breaking niggas down. And Rockefeller died at AIDS. That was the end of his chapter. And that's the person you choose to name your company after. Negro, please. And people, he said, I rock hoes. Y'all rock fellas. Like, son, now you want to come from my spot, fellas? Yo. That Nas nigga was saying some fucked up shit, yo. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He was saying some real fucked up shit. But then, like, Jay got off too. But, like, really, I think it, it was really near the end of it where he was, uh, he went at Nas. You know what I'm saying? It's really, like, the last verse. Who, who do you think got that battle? I think Nas got it. Nas got it. Yeah. I think that's the general consensus, I think. I think Nas got it. And what I think took away from the, the strength from Super Ugly was he was dissing Nas' his baby mother more than really him. Like, I mean, you know, she doesn't rap, like, so, you know, he was kind of going in, exposing her and so on and so forth, you know. But then again, not on the contradiction side, but, uh, they was able to do some business afterwards and there was no hard feelings, you know, so that has to be, you know, respected. And I respect shit like that. No violence. You said what I said. Um, I said what I said. We ain't gotta like each other, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, if it's a dollar to be made, then it is what it is.